All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we'll be starting in about one minute. How you doing tonight, Guy? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm five dollars richer. I was just about ready to mention from uh, from this uh, 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 Stanley Cup that you and I had the bet on. So it was uh, Tampa Bay and Florida here, and then Dallas, as you didn't know, and Rich is out in Texas, and so we had a a big five dollar bet on the thing. So um, I'm gonna get a cup of coffee, maybe <laughs> maybe at McDonald's, not Starbucks. There'll be more in that one next time I see you. So no, that was great. I'm doing well. It was a good game. Good series, and I, uh, I'm excited to have our good buddy John Tucker on here with us. Hey, guys. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Hey, it's awesome to be with you, Guy and Rich, and uh, be part of this webinar. I think we're going to have a lot of fun and have some uh, good ideas for everyone that's attending. So I appreciate the invitation and uh, the participation. Well, great. We're going to get going uh, right now, and I just want to say good to see you, uh, John. I, we don't get to get out of the house as much and yeah. mingle at meetings and all that, and you're looking really good. Uh, you know, Thanks, so, buddy. So are you guys. Uh, you got a lot of sun there. Yeah, you did. Uh, out, Was this well, your, from the tuna trip? Rich, you know what it's like being in the Atlantic when the sun's out, man. It was, it was uh, fantastic. I told uh, Guy and Rich I just got back from a tuna expedition out of uh, – Beach Haven, New Jersey, and we killed it with the yellowfin. So, <clears throat> well, me, we, we expect to we expect to have a steak next time we see. Of I like mine <laughs> rares, you know, just so you like steered and sushi, rare, right? Sashimi, <laughs> right? So well, what, we only have an hour, Saturday, folks. So, go ahead. Dinner Saturday night was spectacular. Nothing like tuna right out of the ocean. Oh, oh God, that's love, a fact. Love tuna, right? Well, uh, thanks everyone for joining us. We're going to get started right now. Uh, I'm going to start with a few introductions here. Uh, Rich and I, I think a lot of you know because you attend our women are, webinars who we are. I'm Guy Yatros. And you want to say hi, Rich? Hi, Rich. <laughs> That's Rich Drake. <laughs> he and I have been friends for uh, almost 20 years and I've been helping Dennis do dental sleep for almost 20 years as well. And uh, we don't know everything, but we've done thousands of devices and we hope to help you. I promise you'll stay on tonight. We'll finish by the time the debate starts. We'll answer all your questions. And we're going to give you the, the 10 building blocks to really get your practice going. And if you'll take these, it's going to take a lot of work to, to, to build those in. But we're going to give you the foundation for building your dental uh, sleep medicine practice. Little housekeeping. Uh, if you have questions, type them into the uh, question box and we will uh, either answer them type wise or we will answer them verbally and if there's a lot of questions we'll, we'll stay on even after if need be but I also want to introduce our good friend Dr. John Tucker I think we've known you almost as long as we've known each other and welcome to have you I know you've got a great practice up there in uh, up in the Pennsylvania area uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about introduce yourself yeah so I Actually, the first person I met at the uh, first AADSM meeting, I think it was back in 2005, was Rich. And uh, as I always tell people, Rich was the first person to tell me the truth. And uh, <laughs> so um, I won't tell you all the other things I've discussed with Rich over the, <laughs> the last years, but um, you know, we, we instantly became friends, and the reason we became friends is because of his honesty, his character, and his uh, conviction for this aspect, and then that led to an introduction to Guy, and from there, it's been history, and it's been an amazing relationship for the last, what, 14, 15 years, so I'm honored to be with you guys, and Thank you. being in Erie, Pennsylvania, um, do a lot of dental sleep medicine in my practice. And uh, so hopefully we can all get some great points from each other tonight. Well, fantastic. Can you all still hear me? Because I had a little internet bleep yeah. for a moment. Yep, I switched. I uh, have more than one internet here just for that reason. So I switched over. Uh, you know, dental sleep is, is not difficult. Uh, I like to say it's each part's not difficult. It's complex. There's a lot of little pieces to it. But compared to doing most of dentistry, root canals, <laughs> two surface composites, for crying out loud, are difficult to do. Uh, you know, I'm glad I don't have to do those anymore. Uh, and we're going to give you the building blocks of, of what you need to do to do this. And what you have to do is go back, take these building blocks, and decide on your systems in your office to, to, to use those blocks and what team members are going to do it. But we will provide you a very good foundation of all these moving parts. And it's really critical I know, John, you do a lot of uh, consulting. Um, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. I know you can go into offices and yeah. help them. And, and if they have one system 
you know, of these things we're going to go through that's not in place, it can cause the whole whole ship to crash, can it? One hundred percent. And one of the things I, you know, want to mention is I use DS3 every day in my practice. And that's just one of the building blocks and to make sure that you have a successful practice. And that's not a plug for you guys. That's the truth. Um, you guys know we've discussed lots of different things in the past. And that's one of the few building blocks, but you have to have systems in place, just like you have to have systems in place for doing restorative dentistry. So if you don't have systems in place, things are going to crash and burn. Well, thank yeah. you for that compliment. We appreciate that. That's <laughs> uh, the yeah. truth, guys. Well, well, thank you. And we'll, uh, I think it's even more important than in some ways than in, in dentistry, because in dentistry, we do a lot of the work ourselves. We have to do, I should say, a lot of the work ourselves, depending on what state you're in and expand the duties. Uh, you just can't delegate a lot. And for dental sleep, you can, you can build a system and the, the team can do most of this. So, you know, we've only got an hour, folks. We're going to jump right into it, but he, and we'll review these at the end if you have any questions. But if you can get these 10 blocks built into your practice and say, I've got a plan for each of them, uh, you're going to be well on your way to enjoying dental sleep in your practice. And the first one we can't do for you, can we? Uh, I think that's, that's kind of on the no shoulders of, 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 the, of the dentist and the dental team. I think, Guy, we could probably talk about this for at least an hour, you know. Um, you know, we talk about Simon Sinek and his, his why. You know, you have to have a why, and I think that probably is what starts your commitment. You know, some of us have stories that I had sleep apnea, my dad had sleep apnea. You know, we've all got a story there. And what, what I would say is don't, don't wait till somebody dies before you <laughs> – you know, you have to be more serious about this because it really does happen. And, uh, you know, you, 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 you can't fake uh, your, your passion for this. So you have to have a passion for it. And, you know, we've been teaching dentists a long time. I think the three of us here have probably taught uh, a whole lot of dentists a lot about uh, dental sleep medicine. And I, I don't know, John, what would you say? Is this one of the, one of the most important in the 10, isn't it? Yeah, Rich, I, I totally agree. And, you know, this is a, you know, 100% agree with you. We could spend an hour just on this one bullet point. And when we speak to dentists, I always ask them about what vertical have you wanted to add in your practice? And, and sleep is just another vertical. If you're doing implants, endo, um, uh, clear aligners, whatever it is, you have to be 100% committed to what vertical you're trying to add or it's going to fail. So it's not that sleep fails in the practice. It's the, the problem is the failure of the team leader, and we could talk about that. Um, dentists need to be the leader of the team. The team needs to look to that person that's head of the practice, he or she has to be a very strong leader and be 100% committed to whatever vertical it is that you want to uh, integrate into your practice. So sleep is no different than anything else, guys. No, and the last thing I'll add on that, it, it, it isn't difficult, but it takes time, and it takes this commitment. There's, each part is not difficult. When you add them all together, it can be overwhelming. And so you, you don't underestimate and think, well, this is something I'll spend three hours on and we're going to just get this going in my practice. It's going to take, when I say commitment, it's going to take some time as well. But then once you get your systems up and running, it can absolutely, I can attest to in my dental practice for years, it ran in the background. I was still very busy with my restorative practice and uh, doing really well in dental sleep, but it was being run by team members and uh, taking not near as much of my time as my dental practice was. And th this kind of leads into, op into, um, uh, the building block number two, if you want to, to do this productively and while doing a restorative practice in particular, picking the right team members to get involved in this and clearly defining what they do, what their jobs are and getting systems in place for them uh, to go forward because uh, this does not have to be done entirely by the dentist. Most of it can't be. Uh, it doesn't, I mean, it can be, but it doesn't need to be. I think you might want to at the beginning to be involved, but as you get systems in place, team can take over way more of this than anyone else. 
uh, not anyone else, sorry, than any other procedures you might do in dentistry. Did uh, you start, uh, John, with maybe one team member? I, I've never asked this question. I don't know. Or did yeah, you? you know, I mean, Guy, you know, the reason this presentation is point on is every dentist has walked through this walk. Like I said, whatever, pick a vertical. So, Rich, to go back to your point, um, you know, you don't take an implant course, and the first case you're going to do is a sinus elevation procedure, right? I mean, that. good, good <laughs> luck and good luck and, you know, God bless the patient that's going to go through that, but that they are building blocks for your success. So yes, you, you have to start at the bottom and work your way up and invest in time and effort into whatever it is that you want to do. So when I first started, guys, to answer your question, I handpicked a person that had no dental background and her uh, background was medical billing. And we all know that sleep is not dentistry, it's a medical issue. Um, so yeah, you, you, you have to have a captain of the ship. If somebody in your practice is not going to own your, the sleep portion of your practice, you are 100% doomed to failure. Yeah. I John, don't can, you, can you say that one more time because I don't want that to just go over everybody's head. You know, I mean, you, you know, we get to visit a lot of offices and stuff like that. And I know guy, you know, with our DS 360 premier tier thing, he said, you know, we can go in these offices and within an hour, you can just pick out, you know, what these things are. But I mean, say it again, how important it is to. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the end of August, I was in a very impressive practice uh, in Pittsburgh. This doctor is very, very sharp, and she already had picked who was going to be the captain of the ship for her sleep practice. And in the first week, they started six cases. I mean, when's the last time you guys went to an office and somebody started six cases after you were there? That's pretty un, you know, right. unbelievable. So if, if, you, if you, doctor, you are the, you are the leader of the team, if you are not willing to delegate and select somebody to be the captain of the ship for your sleep practice, 100%, you will be doomed to failure. That's the way it is. Sorry. It's the yeah. truth. Yeah, and sorry. they have to have time to do that because I think a lot of the times we, we pick one of our assistants and say, okay, that, they're going to be in charge, but then they are also, you know, in charge of everything else. I think it works much better if that's their sole responsibility or at least their primary responsibility and not their secondary responsibility. You can read the screen here. Uh, this will be posted on YouTube and you can, you can watch it later and, and come back to refer. Really the, the type of person you want is, it, it, I, I like what you said, you found a billing person. Uh, it doesn't have to be, a, I'd even say, I look kind of outside of dentistry because we're, we're so, we're so, our little dental world, we only have so many people to choose from. And when you open it up outside of that, there's so many qualified people that can come into your office and, and help. And what do they do that we're gonna have them do most everything that they feel comfortable and we feel comfortable for them to do. Initially, you're gonna help them with it and, and eventually they're gonna take that over and you're gonna be well on your way to, uh, to, to having this dental sleep practice in the background. And so we've gotta train these people and how are we gonna do it? I found a couple of really good books here, Rich. These are, uh, these are, this, these are on my reading level. <laughs> I put that in for so 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 guy Go when ahead. you sent me this when you sent me this presentation to review, I'll tell you what I own both of those books and I've owned okay. them for a long time, so I'm right on spot with you. Good deal. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not. Those of you who know me, uh, I, I I will read what I have to, uh, but this is about the level that uh, you know, I'm from Kentucky originally, and so you know I was lucky to even be able to read it all. And so these are my level of books. And, you know, it's, I put that in as a joke, but you're, you've read them. I've actually looked at those books too. Uh, I get bored sometimes, read parts of books a lot. But, um, you know, you just need to get educated some, some way. There's all kinds of courses like this, uh, webinars. There's uh, training that we're going to talk about in a minute, reading. Uh, AADSM has some uh, uh, good training nowadays. And the virtual learning uh, I know, John, we haven't talked about this, I don't think, in, in too much detail, but we're doing a lot of our training virtually now, and I'm going to mention at the end a, a discount uh, if anybody wants to come to one of our virtual courses, and it's the same material that you would have spent over $1,000 to 
to fly somewhere to stay in a hotel room and a thousand dollars being just the tuition uh and now you can learn it virtually and i think uh, that's one of the silver linings to me and in, in, in this whole COVID thing are you doing more virtual courses and things like that yeah and you know the three of us talked to a lot of people uh on a weekly basis and when SARS 2 started I spent a ridiculous amount of my days on the phone with people that I've met in my past, what, 15, 16 years of doing this. And CE has changed forever. Yep. Um, the, the golden days of doing hands-on in a hotel, I, I think are gone. I mean, Guy and, and Rich, let me know your thoughts. I mean, I think that might be a good thing though. Um, because you don't spend all the time, effort, and money to travel. And if you want to take your team, I mean, back in the good old days when I was in, highly involved with the implants, I'd spend tens of thousands of dollars to take my team and make sure everyone was trained. And thank goodness we don't have to do that. So I think, as you put it, Guy, it is a silver lining that we have so many great programs available to us all online. So my thoughts are the future in CE for dentistry, 100% virtual. Yeah, I think everybody will agree except for maybe my wife. I've been home for the longest I've ever been home before. And uh, I'll walk out. Of, I'm in the spare bedroom now. And I'll walk out and I'll say, I'm home for my meeting. And she'll go, you're home already? It's only get an hour to myself now. So, uh, you know, uh, so I, I was gone about echo, every other weekend before. So I'm going to echo your sentiments because <laughs> usually it was about 36 weekends a year that I was gone. And my right. wife's like, why are you home this weekend? Yeah, yeah. I think we'll probably do some in person. You know, I think there'll always be some need for that, but I totally agree. It's going so well, and the most common response we get at the end of one of our three-day or four-day virtual courses are, man, I'm so glad I did it this way instead of the other. It's just, you know, it just it exceeded the expectations. And uh, we, we, if you want to know more about how we can help you too, what we exist at Dental Sleep Solutions, we call our system DS3, and it's uh, we, we have software training support. And we can help you through all these hurdles. Uh, that's why we exist. Uh, uh, John already mentioned our software is a, the basis for what we do. If you want to know more about what we do, uh, just got hurdles that maybe not related to this, or even if they are, just email us or type in consult uh, tonight anywhere. And one of our trainers, we have all these trainers that that's all they do is help dentists succeed at dental sleep. They'll schedule a meeting and get with you, whether it's about this or something else about dental sleep that we didn't address tonight, we'll be happy to meet with you and help you with your challenges just to show you what we do there. Uh, we also put on a, a lot of meetings throughout the year. We put on the second biggest dental sleep meeting in the, in, in the country and, and uh, coming up in uh, March, we'll see how that, if that's in person or virtual, still pivoting on that. And then John, I know you're, you do a lot of education and uh, we refer to people to you and I always heard nothing but glowing responses about how you've helped their practices succeed. Um, tell us what you do to, to help dentists in, in the education aspect. You know, there's a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of similarities in, in what you and Rich have created, uh, it, it, as well as myself, and it's all been based on need. So, you know, I love the fact uh, that we do a great job with the people that are new to sleep, and uh, walk them through the basics of uh, how to implement a practice. And I think that that's the most important thing and the biggest feedback that we get from attendees from our programs is they can actually leave a program and start Monday morning. And there's great science, there's great literature to support it, but there's common sense building blocks as you guys do to ensure their success. And if they don't start Monday morning, here's what I call it, the 10 day syndrome. And I will tell you this, your team all knows if they can circumvent and block you from adding <laughs> some new vertical, you're all, why do you all laugh? Everybody in the program laughs when I say this. That's funny, it's so true. They, they do know that they have 10 days to block you. They're gonna blink their eyes at you. Can I get you a cup of coffee, Tucker? And it, they know at the end of 10 days, what you just purchased, all dentists have toys in their closets that have never even been unwrapped. They're still in their original boxes. So my big thing is break that 10 day syndrome and ensure people, you know, the education that you provide that the people that have attended can take it and run with it. 
So just simple things. Right. Just we'll like those CPAP machines, John. Not, not even been taken out of the box yet. <laughs> we can talk about those in a minute. Speaking oh, of, of that's, equipment. That's great. Good segue into uh, equipment. We're not going to talk about CPAP, but we're going to talk about the building block number four, which is the equipment of materials you need. And I, I would like to say, first of all, you know, you don't have to have everything on this list. You need some of these things you, you do need. Nothing on this list is expensive. Uh, there's nothing uh, mandatory that costs tens of thousands of dollars that, that you have to do to get going in dental sleep. Unlike implants, you keep mentioning, you know, and uh, some of the other things that you may bring into your practice, it's one of the most profitable areas of dentistry and the least costly to, to get involved. And so if you look at the things on here, we got things like, you know, bathroom scale. I think we can all afford one of those. I can get on Amazon and have one for $15 at my door tomorrow. And so we're not going to read everything on here. Uh, you can you can look through it if you have questions about some of them, just an hour talk. But I think the purpose of this is this equipment is very easy to get most of which you don't even have to get from a dental supplier and it's inexpensive. I know when I sold my dental practice in 2013, I moved into an office in town that was not a dental office and there was like one big room, including our renovation and we're very frugal. Rich would call me cheap, but I'm frugal. I like the word better. It just sounds a little better. We, we, we did the office, put a lounge uh, slash sterilization and, and front desk, two operatories, cabinets, Home Depot's best, two used uh, dental chairs, under $20,000 to equip a whole dental sleep practice. I mean, you can't buy one room of dental equipment just the equipment. Uh, I mean, the chair alone pushes that sometimes uh, with some of these chairs out there. So there's nothing expensive on here that you need to do and there's nothing complicated. And so you can get going with what you have in your office. And if you decide to branch out and do satellite offices, it's very inexpensive to, to do. Um, now we will mention uh, what John mentioned is DS3 and having a patient management system. Uh, to full disclosure, you know, we, we have a financial interest in DS3. But I can assure you, if you try to manage this data in, in your dental software, you're going to be frustrated. The reason Rich and I, uh, over a dozen years ago, sat down and came up with this electronic medical record called DS3 was because we couldn't do it in our practices. We were confused. We were behind. We, were, um, we, we, we got uh, disorganized. And what, what is an EMR? It's an electronic way of keeping records to uh, for your patient data, but also help streamline your systems. And uh, you might as well go out and you know ask your cardiologist to use their software, uh, or a podiatrist, or your chiropractor, or something, because you'd have about as much use for that as you would your dental software when it comes to doing doing this. So uh, that's that's what electronic medical record is. Uh, John mentioned earlier that he uses it. Uh, <clears throat> Can I add one thing, guys? Sure. Do you guys know what the number one chief complaint from all physicians is regarding working with dentists? Lack of communication is my guess. Exactly. 100% guy. Right. right. And you know, if a physician refers a patient to another physician, what do they expect back? Communication from the physician they referred the patient to. Right. So we need to communicate back to, if, 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 if I don't care if it's a PCP, um, a PA, um, sleep physician. Doesn't they matter. Send you, yeah, they send you a patient. You have to provide some type of communication back to them. Right. So one of, one of the things you can think of is a soap note. The unfortunate thing is when I start to talk about soap notes, nobody knows what that means. So, I mean, once you do EMR, it's very easy to create a letter out of DS3. And sorry, I'm not trying to pump DS3. It just, I've tried a bunch of different systems in my 16 years of doing this and DS3 works. I mean, today I pumped out 10 letters in a matter of five minutes. So that's my communication back to the physician regarding the status of the, the patient. And if you want to be successful and you're going to work with the medical community, you have to communicate with them. Absolutely. I, I backed that up because someone asked to, to see that again. So 
Uh, and we'll talk about communication in a little bit. Uh, ZS3 does that, and someone asking about HST. We'll try to get to that in a little bit, maybe at the end, uh, if we don't have time before nine o'clock here at Eastern time. But we manage the home sleep test right through this. So if you, if you don't have a system for this, you're, you're, you're going to just get bogged down and you're gonna not do as good a job because you're not gonna communicate and follow up on your patients appropriately. So, um, so the next four, you can see I've got kind of highlighted as we get around them. And by the way, thank you for putting the questions in the Q&A. If you've got questions, put them in there. We will get to all of them before it's over, either type them out or verbally. Uh, and we'll stay on a little bit if need to, to get to it. But these next four, we call the four pillars. And so I put them kind of in the middle of this uh, 10 blocks. And it's kind of the foundation of most dental sleep practices. So we call them the four pillars, screening, testing, treating, and billing. And those are probably the most crucial blocks that you have. You've gotta have a system and team members in place to do this because if you can screen your patients and find the ones who are at risk, one in five adults have apnea. So you're gonna have all these patients, get them tested, and we're gonna have a system to treat them and then, then get billing. So we're gonna talk about each of those individually for just a few moments. Um, I don't know, uh, John, Rich, you, you all hear people ask, you know, what about the Berlin? What about the the stop bang? What about the DS3 screener? I, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, just one. use one. Just, just start screening just your patients. It. Just ask a question. Right. Pick one. <laughs> yeah, right. pick one. I don't care. You and, just, and, you know, guy, yeah, I go just ahead. want to throw in here real quick. I mean, finally, the ADA... October 23rd, 2017, put out a statement right. that, we, it's a, that we are supposed to be screening our patients for a sleep-related breathing disorder. And just like you guys, I mean, we touch thousands of people's lives a year. Do you realize that there are still people that don't know about that document that, start, that was three years ago, almost you know, coming up on, on the date in October? So like you said, Rich, I don't care. The literature supports Berlin, stop bang, quality. I mean, nay, pick one. Right. Just gr grab it and do it. My personal favorite, stop bang, because it's so easy. I mean, even I can remember it. You know, do you snore? Are you tired? Do you obstruct? Do you have hypertension? Right? Bang is body mass index, age, gender, um, and neck size. So, I mean, simple things. It doesn't matter which one you pick, just pick it. You know, um, I've been, my mantra lately has been exactly what you said, but just in a, one statement. You got to do this because it's your job. It's yeah. your job to do that. And dentists don't realize it's their job to do this. And once they realize it's their job to screen these patients, identify who's at risk, it all becomes easier because they won't, they won't let a patient leave with a, a possible oral cancer on their tongue or nine millimeter periodontal pocket because they know it's their job to tell them that. But when it comes to screening, they, they feel uneasy. And once they accept it's their job, then it becomes much easier for you to do it. It doesn't really matter about the screener. We have a really cool screener app that's built into DS3. I'm gonna uh, let a little cat out of the bag here. Uh, Nathan, our head of, of, of our, our chief technical officer in our programming, will hate that I, that I let this out, but we have a screening application coming out that's very diverse. It's got stop bang, you can change it. You're going to be able to put it on your website. It's very HIPAA compliant. And, you know, is that going to do the trick by itself? No. You still have to make it your job to do this. But I think it's going to make that uh, information a little bit easier for, for the common dentist to, uh, to, to get a hold of and maybe have an interactive conversation with their patients. The number one thing is it's your job to look at all your patients' gums to make sure they don't have gum disease, to make sure they don't have oral cancer, and you're to, supposed to assess their risk for obstructive sleep apnea. And if they have a risk, you're supposed to talk to them about it and facilitate them moving down the road of getting a sleep touch, which is the next pillar. And uh, it's your job. I, I love that 2017. Since that came out, John, I think it's made at least my lectures a little easier. It's made it easier with our training as well, I believe, uh, because um, before it was kind of more us three here saying you should be doing this. And now the ADA says you should be at least backing up what we've been saying. You but think that carries more? The, the, you think that carries more weight than the three of us, guy? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. So, you know, once the patient says, "Okay, I get it. I, I'll have a, a sleep test," 
then then that's the what the do you path. do? What do you do? And we literally have had more than one webinar on just that subject. And we go an hour and we still have questions on it. Um, I will say that this week, hot off the presses, the uh, American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine did a 180 on their position. I don't even have a slide in here great. about it. But great. they, I, I don't know, uh, I, I think, well, Rich knows, and John, I think you know, we have been, we've written letters. Uh, we have been in favor of dentists being able to order sleep tests or be involved in sleep tests, not for diagnosis. You still have the physician the diagnosis, but to be able to hand someone a home sleep test or to order a sleep test through a company that dispenses it. We've always felt that a dentist who's had some training should certainly be able to do that. And failure to not do that causes people to not get tested. And as of Monday, uh, the AEDSM said that they have changed their position on that and that they're um, saying that it, it isn't with the scope of care and I don't have the whole details in front of me. But I think this is probably the most changing. Uh, we got these 10 blocks. This is the one that's changing the most, the rap, most rapidly as we speak right now. There's a lot of good things going on in the HST world, the testing and, and HST in particular. So Guy, just, just one quick thing, you know, and, and I, like you and Rich, have written countless letters, and we've all fought for this. And the funny thing is, how many people know that there's a CPT code to do an A1C test in your office? So you can do a prick blood test in your office. So it's about time that we can order a home sleep study. And once again, None of us are advocating that we do the diagnostic component. That can only be done by a board certified sleep physician. But if we can do a biopsy, we can do implants, sinus elevation procedure. It made no sense that we couldn't do this. So thank goodness for the change. And, and I just want to throw in there, if people don't know what the AADSM is, it's the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine. Right. Thank you for uh, saying that. Sometimes we uh, take for granted what we know. Yeah. Uh, the ADA has been in favor of this uh, prior to that. Uh, if you uh, if you read the 2017 statement, the way I I uh, mentioned, there are some states, uh, most states, uh, that's okay to do that in. There's a few that do restrict it. Again, we could talk about this one subject for for an hour. Um, I would encourage you if you want to know more about that, just type in consultation, and uh, we'll we'll meet with you. We'll help you navigate that. Uh, we can direct you to some of our previous webinars where we actually talked about this subject for an hour. Understand we try to time date things. Today is September, uh, was it September 28th, no, what is it, or 29th? 29th. 29th, 2020. Uh, if we send you to a webinar from six months ago, it's gonna be a little different because those positions have have have, uh, have changed. We'll, we'll be happy to do this. Just type in consult uh, or just, you know, we'll give you our contact at the end and we'll be happy to help you that. Here's the good news is this step is probably the reason that all of us are spending this evening together. Rich and I had so many challenges with this 20 years ago because you could only go into a sleep lab to be tested. It was so much of a challenge that it was, uh, that it was just almost impossible. And now those barriers have lowered, 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 and even this week lowered to where it, this is becoming much easier. There are choices, you gotta have a system and. Uh, you, once you figure out, you send some patients here and do some this way, uh, you get that system figured out and you can get your patient streamlined through sleep test. There's a lot of devices out there. Someone asks about which ones uh, uh, are out there. There's, uh, I see our good friend, Joel Blitz is on here. We watch pats are great. We use Z machines, there's watermarks. There's a lot of different devices out there that you can, you can look at the pros and cons on. Uh, and uh, the, but the good news is they're all gotten less expensive and they're, gotten better and more obtainable. So I think we probably ought to go on. I think the main thing here is to have a plan. Uh, what work, you know, uh, you may have uh, all your patients go down one route, but usually there's different routes uh, that you're going to go down. Some patients we refer to physicians, some we test ourselves, some we use third parties. And uh, a lot of times it depends on their insurance. It depends on who refers that patient. Uh, it may depend on if I have a home sleep testing unit in my office available that day when they come in. So a lot of things going on there and it's very exciting to get those uh, building blocks in place. The only thing I'll add guy is I was just looking on my phone for the, the, uh, the tape, the table that the AADSM put out because you do have to check with your state board. There are a few states where dentists cannot do this, even though the AADSM and I'm sorry, I can't find that right now. 
you guys remember off the top of your head? I know New Jersey's won. Ohio. Um, Ohio. New York, I think. I'm sure nope. Joel, I, since Joel's on, I'm sure he probably knows. Well, yeah, he can type it in for us. But we can give you that information, too. Uh, so, and it's George has won. Yeah. The majority aren't, though. I, I mean, it's uh, the, the majority aren't. And uh, I think maybe now with this new statement, hopefully uh, they'll go back and revisit that and maybe change. You find it, Rich? I found it. All right. Uh, some states in Medicare explicitly prohibit the use of home sleep by dentists. Alabama, Georgia, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Virginia, North Carolina has advised may not use for screening, but are not prohibited from using it for titration. So Alabama, Georgia, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Virginia, North Carolina has a little glitch in it, but but check with your state board. You know, that's certainly something you, we, we don't want anybody getting in trouble over this, but but this is this is one of those links in that chain. You know, guy had that slide up earlier and John said, hey, if something doesn't work here, you know, the whole thing can kind of implode because you can you can have a committed staff member who is wonderful at screening them, but you know, you, you kind of hit a roadblock when you want to get them sleep tested. You know, the, the sleep doc in town, maybe not want to do it. You know, you're, you, you, it's just those are the hurdles that, that we all have that you have to, you have to kind of work through. Absolutely. And uh, again, this webinar is built, uh, is designed to have the building blocks. Each of these blocks do need some, some help. Uh, and if you need more help, that's what we're here for. We can put, put you in the right resources. But I promise you, if you go back and get these blocks in place, you're going to have a, a very sound uh, system for treating your patients. And so to dive down a little bit deeper, when we look at treatment systems, these are the steps, and this next slide shows a little bit better, of, of what you need to do to walk your patient through each of the steps of dental sleep. You go from screening to testing to some sort of consultation. Uh, and then we have exams and impressions or scans. I think, uh, I know at least Rich and I do scans now. The device delivery, and then we have some follow-up appointments, including some follow-up testing to make sure the device is working well. And then we want to see our patients regularly, uh, at least every year thereafter, because apnea is a progressive disorder. It gets worse with time. And I can tell you, your first patient is going to take you longer than 45 minutes, just like your first crown prep or your first DO composite. But I promise you, if you'll follow the systems that we have and Dr. Tucker has for you and you utilize your team, this should not take, uh, it should take less than an hour of the doctor's time to do this because most of this is, can be done by auxiliaries. And that's why it becomes one of the most profitable things you can do as a dentist. And if you've done your first dozen or two and following the right systems, this can be very profitable running in the back. Do you agree? You know, I don't, I put this slide in here, John. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't it, ask it, you if you agreed. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. We're all on the same page and, you know, we didn't really plan this out. I always say that it's a team sport. Right. Um, it's very similar to an ortho practice. Um, you have your initial input and I agree with you. You know, you've got 45 minutes maximum of dentist time. Um, you know, delivery depends on what state you're in and what an assistant can do. Um, and then the follow-ups, I mean, it's pretty much in the hands of your team. And there's very uh, little time that's consumed by the dentist. Most of the time, I feel like the Walmart greeter, and I know you guys are the same, that you have got, you know, I had a guy six foot six come in the day after his appliance delivery and says, where's Tucker? I want to see him. And it's like, you have somebody walk in your practice and doesn't have an appointment. If you're like me, it feels like somebody just kicked you in the belly, right? Right. And he's like, I just want to give the guy a hug. I haven't slept like that in 20 years. Awesome. So we've all had those experiences. I know you have too. And uh, bottom line is team engagement, team sport, educate them and let them run with it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I tell you, we don't have time to get into this, but Another silver lining for COVID is we've done doing a lot more with the um, virtual appointments. We're using DoxyMe in our practice. I don't know what you're using. Yeah. And Same. now we're doing a lot of appointments, consults, follow-ups, and they're less time consuming even now for, for these follow-ups and even our consultations, we're doing them that way. And the patients are loving it. And I'm sh I have no plans on changing that back uh, once the world gets back on its axis. So it's even getting more efficient as we speak. So it's funny you use the orthodontic 
uh, uh, analogy. I use that all the time. I had a good, my good fishing buddy was an orthodontist. One taught me how to fish when I moved here. And I'd go over to his office to, you know, we'd go have lunch pan on our fishing trip. And he's always sitting in his office drinking coffee. And, you right. know, there's all these people running around. And I'm going, when I'm at work, I'm working. You know, you're in there reading the paper and drinking coffee. And I realized it's because right. he could delegate most of that stuff. And I couldn't. It's part of my inspiration for getting involved in dental sleep because I realized, uh, you know, maybe I wasn't smart enough to get north, though, but I'm smart enough to look for another path here. And uh, dental sleep uh, really, really seems to, to be a way to go. When it comes to treatment, we already hit on this, so we can kind of go through this a little bit. You have to document all this stuff. And there's a lot of reasons for it, medically, legally, insurance billing. I'm going to give you an opportunity to come to an uh, insurance billing course for four hours. It'll teach you everything you need to know. But there's a lot of documentation that goes on that. And then, of course, the workflow. We mentioned that. And then I think what uh, Tucker, what, what Dr. Tucker, you mentioned is this patient communication, I mean, a physician communication, rather. Uh, you, we have an obligation, as you mentioned, to do this. And uh, I think I don't know what your protocols are. I'll explain mine and see what you two do. I have at least three letters per patient. We do at the beginning of treatment, at the end of treatment, and somewhere in the middle. And I try, if this thing goes on for a period of time, a patient goes back up to Michigan for the summer because I'm down here in Florida, I try to send a letter at least every six weeks or so because to make sure that the physicians don't think I've forgotten about their patient. So that equates here in Florida, most of my patients have two or three doctors at least. They've got cardiologists, you know, M, uh, primary cares, uh, gastroenterologists, they got all these physicians that work with them. And so I write each one of those a letter. So we're talking about nine letters on average, I would say per patient. Uh, does that seem about, I know Rich, you're pretty much the same. Is that in line with what you do, John? Yeah, it's a hundred percent the same. And you know, anytime, here's my line. Anytime you see a patient or have communication with them, and, you know, I, I jumped on the doxy.me program right when the whole SARS-2 thing started. Communicate. Anytime you have communication with a patient, a letter is generated and sent to uh, their primary care physician, whatever physician, physicians they see, because most people that have a sleep-related breathing disorder have multiple, multiple physicians. So, right. yes. And anytime you talk or touch the patient, a letter goes out. Right. And you already mentioned uh, DS3. Uh, one of the things I'm most proud of, we actually just did some updates, which I think we've worked out the bugs with that today, but the, uh, uh, we've, re we've redone a lot of our software. And with our software, you can write these letters, click a few buttons, and it automatically faxes it digitally through the cloud. So you're not printing it out, putting a stamp on it, or manually putting it on a machine to, to fax. And uh, I, I know Rich is a fisherman, and so we got to frame it with that, that a lot of the stuff that uh, he says is a fishing story, but this one's not a fishing story because I went into his software. It keeps track of all the letters you sent. I forgot how many it was we looked last year. Do you remember how many letters it was? Because I, I all called it a fishing story until I went in to look. Cause your yeah, it was, is little... it was like October, and we'd already sent out over 9,000. So, yeah. uh, you know, the thing I will add uh, – to that, John, is this goes back to the beginning where you said, hey, what's what's the deal with the physician? What's their complaint? And it was that we don't communicate. So, you yeah. know, I, I love what you said earlier, Guy, about, you know, when we talk about the airway, you know, air is not overrated. <laughs> you know, we yeah. got to have air. Yeah. I don't think that communication is overrated either. You know, we don't get this as dentists. You know, we don't, we don't kind of live in that world, but physicians do. And the only thing I will add to what you guys have both already said is that keep the letters short yeah, and sweet totally. and simple right. and to the point. You know, I, I did a lunch and learn today, guy. Uh, imagine that. I, you know, <laughs> I do one pretty much every single day. But uh, I asked the physician, I said, you know what you're going to love about my letters? And he kind of looked at me funny. He goes, you mean you're going to communicate with me? And he was kind of surprised. And I said, yeah, I am. There, there are only two or three sentences. And he said, wow, you actually get it, don't you? You know, so the point yeah. was, we, we like to make these soap notes, you know, that are 12 pages long. And we like to do a lot of this stuff. But again, and I'm okay if you want to do that, because there are a few doctors out there who still read those, but there aren't very many. 
I like the short version and then the long version. Go ahead, go ahead and do them both if you want. But, but the, hey, we saw the patient. She went up to, uh, back to Michigan. As far as we know, she's wearing her device and doing great. You know, it can be, it, it can be that simple, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be real, real complicated. But it is important. It's extremely important. And just think about the time it would take if you didn't have, you know, a system for doing that. So hey, uh, that's how I would go ahead. Just one cool thing that I love about the software is I can customize my letter. I don't have to use the template. So it's, you know, I've taken little bits and pieces from your um, uh, standard letters and made it so it's what exactly what I want. And that takes a few seconds. So love it. You can customize it to what you want. And it'll pull the fields of various medical right. history and things like that to make your letters better. But uh, again, it's just one of the things that helps you uh, build your practice for uh, a dental sleep. And so billing, uh, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to come at a discount to a billing course here in just a few moments. Uh, billing is really a burdensome thing um, when it comes to medical. Uh, I know that Lisa was answering some questions uh, for DSP Magazine, I think uh, is what it was for. And one of the questions they were about billing, what are the biggest challenges are, like two or three questions. And uh, I, I think uh, one of her answers was, uh, cause she was reviewing them with me today, was that Dentists think dental billing and medical billing are the same. And it, it, it's just not. It's totally, totally different. Um, if, I mean, I think we were trained to do certain things in dentistry, you know, it, root canals, crowns, all the stuff on the screen here, implants, maybe some of us. And we feel comfortable doing that because we've got training in it, we've got experience in it, and we do it every day, all day long. But if someone asks you to fly a plane or do your own taxes or build your own house or represent yourself in the court of law, maybe. Some of those you might feel comfortable doing, but a lot of them you wouldn't because you haven't been trained to do them. And even if you know how to do your own plumbing, I, I spent two hours last weekend cleaning out the calcium deposits of my dishwasher, thinking, is this really a good utilization of my time here? Uh, I probably don't know what I'm doing as well as someone who's trained to do it. And when it comes to medical billing, get an expert to help you. Uh, we have a company that does that, but we can refer you to other companies that's where, you know, that, that outside of us. Uh, we know that this will be the Achilles heel to your success if you try to do it yourself, and, and, unless you go out and get a lot of training on how to do it yourself. And uh, a good start would be, like I said, coming to the webinar we have. Uh, it's, I would say, the, you know, the, it's the one thing that's probably underestimated the most in these practices. Guys, so, so one of the things, if I can just jump in for two seconds, is in my programs, I always tell people, I'm going to tell you every way you can kill a dental sleep medicine practice because <laughs> I've like been it. there, done that. <laughs> All right? And the number one thing, I guarantee you, if you let someone on your team, your front office team, try and do medical billing, 100% promise you, your sleep practice will die. Let somebody do it that knows what they've been, what they're doing and been doing it for years. Yes, absolutely. And, and if you want to get busy and you want to start doing it yourself, uh, we offer training. We'll help you train someone to do that. We've got an office right now we're training uh, on, on how to do this. And we're happy to do that, but that's not where you're going to start. You're not going to start with a, a, a dental Agreed. assistant making your, your own your, your porcelain veneers. You need to hire a lab technician. If you get busy enough to make enough porcelain veneers, well, then maybe you want to have someone in office doing that for you, and that, that might make sense. But it doesn't make sense to do it right out of the box. Use a third-party biller. And I'll have to say this is something, uh, John, one of the things that I repeat a lot of the times is, is these people don't know how good they have it. Uh, because I've been doing this o over 20 years, and 20 years ago, there were no third-party billers that were doing this for you. You had to figure it all out yourself. True. And this is just true, true when it comes to HSTs as well and all this. Yep. But now there's a lot of good companies out there. Pick one and let them help you for a way less hassle to get this. You know, this block should be a plug and play. I mean, you still need to have systems in your office. You still need to know what your financial goals are and some things like that. It's not, they don't do everything for you, but they can take this block from being really big to very, very small for you. You okay, Rich? <laughs> stepped away on us okay oh it's just getting kind of hot man i wouldn't uh, turn the air conditioner uh, on so all right sounds good well listening to you all that hot air you guys are blowing it's out, blowing man. right through the microphone all the way to texas from <laughs> pennsylvania and florida to texas man we're heating up the state 
All right, That's folks, funny. we got 10 more, 10 more minutes. We're going to get finished on time and answer any questions that we haven't gotten to. Uh, a marketing plan. I mean, we're, we're having a meeting tomorrow with some of our, uh, we call them our DS360 Premier Tier members there. They, they sign on for several years of consulting. And, you know, that's one of the questions they have for, for our, uh, our, our meeting tomorrow. And it's an ongoing process. Um, and as you branch out, there's a lot of things you can do to, to market yourselves. Um, I don't think, it's my opinion, I'm interested to hear your alls, that it's the first thing you need to do. Uh, I think the first thing is, is, is line one here, you know, focus on your dental practice. Uh, going outside, uh, I think setting up branding and things like that are important. But it's not the, the you know, if this block can, can be small and not be uh, completed, uh, and you can still get going because you've got so many patients in your practice. Do you, when you teach this, uh, John and Rich, what do you, do you feel the same or different? Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. Um, you know, like I said, pick any vertical. You know, I keep harping on that. So the literature says, you know, that what was published in Chess that 26 percent of your existing dental patients are at high risk of having uh, an undiagnosed sleep-related breathing disorder. <clears throat> Get your systems in place. You have to do that. If you don't have your systems in place and you start this huge marketing campaign and you really don't know what you're doing, you're going to crash and burn. So start small, get some cases completed, know what you're doing, make sure your team's educated and, and everything is ready to go before you start doing any mass marketing. Yes. Well, John, one, one way to do it would be to, you know, spend a hundred thousand dollars on TV commercials and then it would really show you where your systems didn't work. <laughs> at least, at least you'd know then, Hey, it cost me a hundred grand. I figured out what didn't work, yeah. but that, that makes perfect sense. You know, you got to get one patient through, you know, before you get two, and then, you know, it doesn't make any sense to make this a big, a big deal up front. Other than in your own practice. Sounds like you have experience in, uh, with, with someone in the, that went down that path to some extent, maybe. But uh, we, we, Guy and I, all the time, we say, hey, uh, we're, we're not so smart. We've just made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, we've been doing it so long that we figured out all the stuff you're not <laughs> yeah. supposed to do. I've, we could talk an hour and a half about marketing as well. We have marketing videos. If you join DS3, we have a lot of ongoing education that's all included. Uh, and we can help you go into more detail. But again, I'm going to go back to the, this list and maybe take a screenshot of it or come look at the recording and go back and start look, building these things in your practice. These, this is the foundation. Uh, we didn't say we're going to get every finished, uh, you know, doorknob and fixture with, with this. It's the, the building blocks, not, not the finish. You, you've got to finish yourself. And I don't think anything happens without goals and measuring. Uh, I, I think if you just say, I want to be successful, I want to do dental sleep. Well, you got to define that. You've got to have real goals and you've got to know what steps it needs to take to obtain those goals. And then you got to measure it and you got to measure yourself and pat yourself on the back when you reach them and, and revisit the ones you don't reach. Uh, I think that's just true in life, but it's extremely true in, 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 in dental sleep. Anybody have any more to add on that? I, I think that's good. And I, I would, I would add to that guy that, um, you know, don't, don't set those goals too lofty in the beginning because, you know, I hired a new staff member a couple of years ago and um, we sat down yesterday for a, a review in the, in the practice there. And she said, you know, you told me it would take me about a year before I really got it. And I thought you were full of bull, you know, at the time, but she said, you're right. It, it, you know, it, it takes about a year, even for a good staff, an intelligent staff member. So, don't don't set those goals too high but you know certainly work on you know try to get your arms around all of these things that we've talked about tonight and then just start chipping away at it you know the the uh you know make sure you have what you need and you have your systems in place and what do you do when somebody calls what are you doing somebody needs a sleep test how are you going to bill for it what do you tell the patient when the patient says, okay, I'm, I'm convinced doc, but how much is it going to cost? And what does my insurance cover? You know, these are the, the high spots that we've hit on, but there's a lot of filling in the blanks in between here. Absolutely. So Rich and Guy, can I add one, one thing to Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Sure. Don't compare yourself to others. Oh, that's a good point. And, and there, there's so much misinformation out there right now about 
who's doing the, how much a month in, in sleep. And I compare it to the patient's um, consumption of alcohol. We all know that you're to double it. So if they tell you they have two a night, <laughs> you have to ask, is that six packs, fifths, or, or what, right? So you need to double it. It's kind of the inverse of what dentists tell you their income is. We all know you cut it in half. <laughs> so um, don't believe what anybody tells you. Uh, like I said, we started the evening out with Rich told me the truth when I first met him. And it was not pie in the sky. I'll never forget that, Rich. Um, so bottom line, do what's best for you and don't compare yourself to anyone else. Make this your own Kool-Aid. Hey, man, and treat, treat your patients. You know, we've always said too, John, if you keep the patient's best interest at heart, you never get too far out of line. You know, I, that may have been one of the things that Guy taught me early on was, you know, that that's what we do. And, you know, we don't like to say, hey, you should do this because you can make money. John talks about adding these different Amen. vertical things. But we, we do this because we want to make a living, but we also do it because we like what we do and we like the challenge. And, you know, when you're a new dentist, you like doing everything. When you're an old dentist, you know, you're looking for something new. You don't want to do another filling again or something like that. So again, we're not putting this up there j just to motivate you financially, but we do want you to see that you can make money at this too. Yeah, but if you do one of these devices a month and you pay some uh, lab fee, you pay for a third party villain and you pay for uh, our, our, our DS3 fees. You're pushing 20 grand for that at $2,500, which is not, I don't think too lofty of this. If you're doing one a week and take four weeks off here, you're pushing six figures that you could add to your, your, your gross. Even if you had to hire someone extra person and that's all they did, they're still, a lot of profit left over in in this to do it. So it's, I honestly believe, and I say this, I say a few bold statements, just a few of them. One of them is as a general dentist, there is nothing more profitable that you can do than dental sleep because it can be delegated so much and, it, and it's profitable to start with as opposed to doing implants and things like that, which require more dentist time. Uh, so it's, you know, if it's not the most, it's one of the most. That's a pretty bold statement, but it's true. And I guess, you know, if that's not enough reason to do it, I mean, you can live like this in your practices if you want to. I can tell you, I got this ad today from the American Academy of General Dentistry. I, I sent it out to all the, the team. Rich called me up laughing about it. This was a real ad. I guess some of you are maybe having to live like this, and I, I feel for it because I don't do dental, uh, do general dentistry anymore. Rich doesn't. John, I know you do some and are, are, yeah. are going towards less, but, I mean, if this is yeah. what we're coming to, in dentistry, um, forget the money that you can make at dental sleep. At least I can show up for work and not look like I'm going to the, the moon for crying out loud with, with what's going on here. Uh, that was a real ad. I got it today in my inbox. I guess maybe some people are wearing this. And you just need a plan to do this. Um, John, I'm going to give you an opportunity to give your contact in just a few minutes. Uh, first, I want to mention that's all we do to it, DS3. And uh, we help dentists succeed at dental sleep. We help through education, coaching, and our software. We have a whole team. If you want to, if you have a challenge that you need uh, from tonight, we didn't answer something, or a different one, just type in consultation. Someone will contact you, answer your questions. That's what we do uh, all day long. We do do uh, these virtual courses about once a month, and they've been really, really successful. I promise you, if you come to, you're going to enjoy them. Uh, the next one is Monday through uh, Wednesday because it's usually are Tuesday through Thursday, but I'm speaking for the Panky Institute later on that week. And they're from seven to nine. If you got your phone out, just scan that, that code there and you'll get $200 off. Uh, it's normally $495, so you'll get $200 off and you can save that, that spot there. So if you uh, go ahead and scan, I'll leave it up there for a moment. Uh, it's it's uh, seven to nine, four nights, I'm sorry, three nights. Uh, we go through all the pillars, screening, testing, treating, and billing, billing very briefly because it, you get to come to the billing course for free if you join the uh, the virtual uh, uh, meeting that I'm doing. Lisa has been doing, she, Lisa Hurt is our billing manager. She's been in billing for 25 years. Uh, that course is on Friday the 16th. You get to, that's included with, with our virtual course. So it's actually 10 hours of CE for 
well under five hundred dollars. Uh, and if if you want to just come to the billing, you can do that for one hundred and forty nine with the with the code you have there. Uh, or again, if you sign up for this course, uh, then you get to come to that for free. If that date doesn't work for you, we record both of these and you have access to them for a month. So you and your team can even watch these courses as well. And so uh, if that's not enough, <laughs> we're gonna give you a dental sleep starter kit too with things, cool things like my taps and brochures and some uh, uh, patient uh, educational photographs there. Uh, each dental office that signs up will, will get one of those included with the tuition. So I'm gonna back that up for just a moment to if anybody wants to grab that that code, uh, again, you can contact us to, um, to get that discount for, for being on this course. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions on that. John, how can they get a, get a hold of you? Uh, you can go to our website, tuckereducationalexcellence.com. And uh, we have some very unique programs coming up for the last or Q4 of this year and then starting in 2021. So check out our website at tuckereducationalexcellence.com. And, you know, as Rich said, the three of us are in this for a reason, to provide quality education for you so that you can successfully implement sleep into your practice. And Rich, one of the best things you said, if you're in this for the money and people are telling you that you're going to do 150 appliances a month, <laughs> Don't believe them. <laughs> right. It's like the it's like the fishing thing, you know, uh, John. You know the 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 what do you call it with the crystal ball? You know the witch with the crystal ball and the fisherman sitting yeah. there, and she says, "Oh, um, I see you. Lots of big fish, you know, lots of fish, and you're there a day too late." <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, we do have another, our next webinar coming up is October 27th. Uh, you can scan, uh, again, with the, the QR code there to register. Uh, we're having our other good friend. I know, John, you know Dr. Murphy well, too. He's going to be well. yeah. rich and, uh, rich and uh, uh, Dr. Murphy will be doing that alone because I've got commitments with the Pank Institute that night. But they're going to talk about really how you work with sleep physicians. I, I'm jealous I'm not going to be on this. I will watch the recording because I'm sure I would learn a lot from uh, being on with these two. Uh, Rich, I would say that you probably visit more physicians' offices than any other dental sleep dentist in the country. They're certainly one of the highest ones. I know that you, what do you, as an average before COVID hit, you were doing more than one a day, right? Is that correct? Uh, sometimes we did a breakfast and then sometimes we do a lunch, but you know, I, my goal is to do four a week. So, and we, we pretty much do that most every week. Uh, you know, interestingly, we, we converted over and we started doing some of the, the uh, lunch and learns via Zoom, you know, and that's, that's worked pretty well. But, uh, you know, a lot of these docs, um, they, they didn't even want to do that. And I, I, I didn't quite get that, but I will say that I don't know about you guys or you, John, um, but, you know, we, we kind of hit that June, July seem to be the bottom. And it's, yeah. it's actually started to tick back up, you know, pretty significantly since then as well. You know, the, the lunch and learns, people are more receptive to them. We've got more patients coming in. We're getting more referrals, you know, all of that. So I, I, I hope that that is a, a glimmer of hope for uh, the rest of us out here. Yes, same here, Rich. Absolutely. Uh, the Guy, the uh, screening criteria stuff. Somebody asked for for that. I don't even remember what. Yeah, was. I'll get to that. Let me just make one more housekeeping because okay. it's nine o'clock. And I know that uh, there's uh, some other hot aired people talking that you might want to listen to <laughs> that are going to be near as entertaining and won't have as much of value to say as we're saying here. This may be on your TV set. So feel free to go there if you want. You will get CE. It will come to your inbox. Whatever email you registered with, you'll get your CE. Uh, if you don't see it, look in your spam. If you can't find it then, within 48 hours, uh, contact us. We'll make sure you get it. So I want to get that housekeeping and we'll stay on. Uh, to, to answer your, answer your questions, if you uh, if you need to go hear the other um, uh, people talk, then we'll let you go do that. Uh, the question is, what's the screening criteria? I I, um, I I don't know if they want to see the screen again or not. The screen's not important. Uh, I think the idea is you you really need to know what puts people at risk for apnea. I had up there the red flags. Maybe that's what they were wanting to see. Uh, if that's what you want. 
uh, email info at dentalsleepsolutions.com and I'll email that slide to you. Uh, but those are really just the things that I memorized years ago of the, these are what people are at risk for. Big necks, hypertension, diabetes, snoring, and, uh, and then sleepy, once you, tired, sleepy, yeah, and once you know those things and kind of why they're at risk, you need a way to, to kind of see who's at risk for that quickly. Uh, Tucker said that Dr. Tucker said he liked to stop bang. I agree. That's a great way to do it. Just some sort of questionnaire to quickly assess their risk. Because what we do know is the questionnaires have been very well validated. The people who risk are high risk when they fill those out honestly, and we test them, most of them have apnea. So it's not that difficult to assess their risk. It's really primarily done through questionnaires, and then furthermore, uh, you can use your brain a little bit and look when they've got big necks and tongues and things like that, which we'll teach you in the course as well. And I hope that answers the, the question. Does anybody else have any insight on that? So, so I'm gonna share one of my major dirty little secrets, ready? Okay. We're ready. I don't focus, sorry, on any of the things you guys just did. I've never had a patient come to me and say, I want my AHI to go from 40 <laughs> to below five. <laughs> right. You, right? Seriously, think about it, right? I've never, in the thousands of patients I've treated, what does everybody in life want? The want to feel better, is, more energy. A better quality of life, Rich. Yeah. I focus on quality of life. So that's, I think that's a huge secret. Who doesn't want to have better quality life? I've not met one patient yet. And I ask you this, does most of the people who want a better quality of life say that includes wearing a CPAP at night? Of course. <laughs> I, mean, I think wearing a dental device gives them oftentimes a better quality of life as compared to CPAP. Now, CPAP does give people a better quality of life. I'm not beating up yeah, entirely I mean, on it, but that falls right. in line with what you're saying. That a lot of people want the better quality of life, but the treatment, the only treatment they've been given doesn't right. accomplish that because it, it, of, of the right. side effects of the CPAP itself. So, you know, I, I, per I'm, I personally am not a CPAP basher. I tell people, look, I'm in it for whatever treatment is going to work best for you. And, you know, I think the, the, the thing that I hear the most is, all right, so if I do have a sleep issue, do I have to get a CPAP? And the answer is, so we have the diagnostics come back. We don't know that, but there are certainly multiple options for your treatment. And that leaves it wide open. Yeah, I'm in agreement with you, but I'm probably a little bit more, oh, uh, I've just, I've gotten a little bit tired of the fact that over and over and over again for 20 years, patients come in with mostly symptoms, low AHI, very good candidates for dental devices, and they've been struggling for three years, spent lots of money of insurance and their own money, and no one ever mentioned to them a dental device was even an option. Agreed. And I think, I think that's what we've got to fix. I'm with you. I think CPAP's great for the people that, do, that, 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 that it works for and the ones that uh, there's a whole lot of people it helps. But we've got to get out there and educate our physicians that they should be given both of these options and when appropriate dental devices as well. And that just doesn't happen much. Most of the time they get a CPAP with no further discussion. And that's what we could change. Uh, as as dentists and Rich, what Rich is changing by going to his office, and I'm sure you'll be talking about that in the next webinar as well. So, yeah, it, great discussion. We could we, we could go on and on about that. 100% yeah. agree with with both you guys. Uh, I mean, go to the public, right? right? Let the public know there's an option. I mean, why why hasn't somebody done a big campaign on that? And I know we're way over. We're what 13 minutes over, so I don't want to burn more time. Yeah, there's two more questions here, Rich. Do did you? I haven't read. I'm them. answering the one for uh, for Dr. Brown. She is going to actually take uh, Dr. Tucker's course coming up very soon. Oh, cool. So, um, you know, John, she had uh, she's going to start doing her in home care, a one man show, and I was had some things about you know questions about. Uh, you know, who to contact and stuff like that. Yes. It's pretty much the same thing, but, but John will, will go in depth uh, with that type of stuff. Uh, I, yeah, I assume I, John, right? Yeah. And, yes. I, and I know, and I know um, that person personally. 
and okay. have known, known that doctor for years. So Good. Well, you can reach yeah. out then and do that. Now, Dr. We'll Parmar, uh, who's, who's one of our big DS3 hitters, uh, is talking about uh, with DME, can anyone deliver the device so long as they sign for it? Uh, I don't think that's particularly the case. I think, you know, that still falls under under the, the dentist peer view, you know, it's like, you know, there's a lot of doctors out there who have assistants delivering dentures, but they're not supposed to, you know, the well, dentist on the is state. supposed to do it. Does yeah. it? Yes. Yeah. And, and I did qualify that. And I said, depending on the state guidelines, um, okay. you know, if you have, if you have an EFTA, like in Pennsylvania is different than Ohio as far as delivery of appliances, whether, I mean, whether you're talking about a denture, a, a RPD, uh, night guard, pick one. So it's it's defined by your state board. So okay. check with it, your state board. Yeah, it is. And we do have to go by that, even though it's DME. Uh, if you're yeah. taking an impression or scan and you're putting something in someone's mouth, uh, that's under your dental license. And if it says uh, assistant can do that, then great. Uh, I mean, in Kentucky, I mean, it just depends on states. I know when I was in Kentucky, they could do composites and amalgams. I mean, you just, you cut the crown prep and left the room. Uh, right. And so the, the different states are different. So you gotta look at your state board. I will mention one thing but, uh, kind of in closing. That's one of the advantages to scanners, to my understanding, is a lot of the, the states uh, have less regulations or no regulations on who can scan. Uh, and even if they do, the, there's not, most of them don't have regulations on who can begin the scans and you can go in and finish it uh, as opposed to impressions. And so that's where it can really be an efficient time saver, uh, depending on your state, uh, at least in my state it is. So uh, one of my motivations for getting a scanner because I couldn't delegate the impressions, but I could do the scan. So there's a little tidbit uh, off the, uh, of kind of off the subject. I think that's all the answers or questions rather. Uh, we certainly don't have all the answers, but I hope that was enough. Uh, everyone, again, I hope to see you in the future. Uh, again, Dr. Tucker, how do we get a hold of you one last time? TuckerEducationalExcellence.com. And I want to thank Guy, you, and Rich for the opportunity to be part of this webinar. As always, it's a blast working with you guys. We always have fun. Thank yes, you, John. Thanks, thanks for being with us. You, you always add it, you know, a little bit different uh, – uh, insight because you know if, if I've learned anything doing this 20 years it's there's more than one way to do it and oh, you, you know it's you always get something different from everybody so again thanks for joining us yeah hopefully we'll do it in person real soon uh, and so um, we'll, we'll be in touch I guess thank you everyone Guy, yes. five dollar checks in the mail yes sir go <laughs> lightning go bolts <laughs> all right good night everybody all right